Here, my hands off. Welcome back to the Content Complete Podcast, featuring myself, Spencer, and my co-host, Matt, with the Anathal Gaming TV, and a nomadic traveler, leader of the people of the Fist, hailing from the flowing sands of the land of Ishtar. Fistcake, how's it going? Hi. What's up? <laughs> Just flew I'm in from, from Ishtar. Ishtar. <laughs> I'm boy, from my Ishtar. arms are tired. <laughs> boy, my arms are tired. <laughs> I thought way too long about that intro. <laughs> Like yeah, the last okay. 10 okay. minutes, I've just been like, okay, flowing sands of Ishtar. <laughs> uh, okay, should I put nomadic? Well, if where should I put that? <laughs> just, uh, from the depths just of it. Your... Damn it, yeah. I can't use depths anymore. I see. I like, I, it's a whole new world. Mm. New year, new Spencer. Yeah. Or I guess new new lore for me. I, I don't I don't know. Yeah. Just the sure. lore continues to grow. I don't have any lore for you guys. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's, it's the Fine. bit. Fine. We all die. <laughs> Matt's what in a nihilistic mood because of Smash today. Don't <laughs> don't mind him, everybody. <laughs> Speaking of Smash, let's start with what we played this week. Fistcake, why don't you start us off? I, I don't know if I played a whole lot of Smash this week, but um, because we've been moving and uh, had Christmas holidays and bullshit, so I really haven't even played a whole lot of video games. Um, but what I did play, I started playing some Kenshi. Uh, oh, after I saw being, that. I saw uh, what M- Matthias from fucking Northern Lion Crew XL Mathis, Mathis yeah Mathis, Matthias is was. my alternative ego. Your not even your alter ego. It's your alternative ego. Yeah, <laughs> it's the full word. Yeah, he's for guy. Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand alternative ego, okay? Cut it's just not my a life genre. in two pieces. Well, that's oh, alternative God. ego. I was okay. So, anyways, played. <laughs> I've been playing Kenshi. I'm uh, probably gonna do like a little mini let's play of it. Um, I thought that game was I'm, real bad when I played it. Well, it's a very, it's is very um, obtuse. I guess that's the word. Yeah, like I've only I've only played a few hours of it, and I've been trying to like just figure out what the game is so I can kind of like craft my own story about basically a fist of the North Star kind of person, but. I don't even know if fighting with your bare hands is an option in that game. And or if it is, if it is, it's very hard and you have to like find martial arts and oh shit and stuff. So could you not have bump a look. your mic, please? Right. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I'm Matt. Hey, listen, can I just talk? To, I just want to do something real quick. I'm emotive. Just creating more work for yourself, this kick. I know. I, I fuck myself it's over. For That's bit. fine. <laughs> it's, it's for a piece. Um, so basically, I've been pretty much mining for like the entire time I've played, and then also got like randomly like I've been like trying to keep an eye out for people to like so they don't like ambush me. But when you have it like on triple speed, people kind of just show up out of nowhere, and it's like, oh shit! I managed to run into town, only got my legs broken, and uh, I, well, I crawled into town, I got my legs broken, and, and you know everything's fine after that, and. Um, I did venture off into a new town, acquired a free teammate, so that's pretty sweet. So now we're all mining for that money. And then uh, now we're actually just exploring the wasteland, see if there's any other place I can go to. I played uh, for like 15 minutes. And I, was, well, I walked out of town, Yeah. and then I got ambushed. Yeah. And I was like, that's cool. But then I couldn't get up. Yeah. Like, I didn't know how to get up. Oh yeah, it's a you had to like really like you kind of have to have like a a learning game before you play it for real if that makes sense. At least that's what I usually do with like survival games or like stuff like that where you have like oh there's so many mechanics and shit. Uh uh, uh okay oh god watch out for this oh god. Yeah. And it's actually not too hard to survive as long as you just keep an eye out for people and um because like the the cool thing I find about Kenshi is like the food system. Is that you're you don't have to like take a separate action to eat. Like your food has like a bar, it has like a durability or whatever. And he just munch and your characters will just munch on it as they work and whatnot and refill their own hunger thing. It's like, oh. Well, I don't ridiculous. know why that's yeah, I don't know why that's so cool to me. It's just like I I don't know if I've I guess I haven't seen a whole Innovation. lot of that. Apparently that's what it is. <laughs> we need new food tech in twenty nineteen. Give Kenshi food tech to everybody in twenty nineteen. It's also kind of 
like a bit more realistic. Realistic, yeah. Because mm. people don't always just yeah. Because if you're like playing like Minecraft or something like that or Salt, then you just like are walking around. And you're like, well, I'm hungry. I have all this food in my backy pack. Mm. I'm not gonna automatically eat it. You have to tell me to do that. Yeah, yeah. bitch. The food is that it be eaten. Yeah, I I definitely think it, it it emphasizes having a a supply, and then your supply, you know, is used kind of as you go instead of having to worry about like mini managing it, which is cool. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. So yeah, I guess that's what it is. I'm just tired of like having to like fucking select the item, eat the item, and all that fun jerk stuff. Jerk off on so the item is a big thing. Jer- yeah. Jerk off on it, and just fondle the item, look at the item deep into its eyes, and tell mm-hmm. how much you love the item. Mm-hmm. But you yeah. don't want to no. make the other items of food, you know, jealous. jealous. Yeah. Oh yeah, you, you gotta, gotta do it in drop secret. the other food. You drop the, all the other food in a different area. Take your special food into that one area that you know that nobody's going to walk by. No guards are going to s- swing by and say you're doing stuff illegal stuff. Mm-hmm. With the item. With the item. <laughs> and then uh, you come back and it's all good. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. I recommend it if you are into that. kind. Of, it's a... I wouldn't I wouldn't watch Mathis play it because he does like a kind of like a story thing with it. Like he's like, ah, oh, this is the story of Rust Hilt as he goes on his adventures and whatnot. Yeah, I hardly I can't watch any of Mathis's uh solo stuff because his shit like he's Matt doesn't agree he, with his brand of humor. Yeah, I don't like his <laughs> what he thinks is funny. What does he think is funny? It's just it's, overly like teenage level sexual jokes yeah. and kind of like gross uh, humor. Oh, uh, Nice. 69. Yeah. <laughs> 420 and Blaze. Okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, well, I guess watch other people play it. I, I'm probably going to do like a story like thing anyways, where it's not going to be as epic and as cool as his stuff, but uh, I'll figure that later. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, get in, you know, you just got to get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been playing a lot of Ma- Ma- Majan. Majan. Majan, yes. Majan. I always, like, every time I say it, I'm like, I always say it wrong, and I'm always like, I don't know how I, uh, brain work better. <laughs> but anyways, I've been playing a lot of Majan on either the computer or my phone. Um, uh, there's, like, a free, like, Flash game you can play. There's also a Majan Club, which is has... Which is basically has like a quick play mode and like shows you like what are the door indicators and whatnot of Majan during the round. So that's kind of handy. But uh, it also has like a story mode that's very poorly translated. And it's just like, oh, we're people in high school, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to go back to quick mode or quick play. (laughs) But uh, the other other interesting thing about Majan Club is that each character has like special abilities, but you can also turn those off. So... I pretty much just play to the most basic form just to have like, they're like, oh, so that's what the door is for this round. I see. I get it now because I'm still rusty on door indicators and like half the hands you can use in Majan. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's the main thing that I, that's, that's the main problem that I have with, with it is, is just knowing what I need to do to win. Mm. Um, oh, hey, how's it going? Raisu. Welcome to the chat. We're just talking about Majong. Um, Hello. At the moment, but uh, I'm I'm I, I exclusively have been playing it in an app on my phone, and so I was I was curious how you were playing it because it seemed like you had the kind of a more uh, the one I'm playing is Mahjong Time. Never heard of it. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I, I, an app. Yeah, I wanted to find one that had multiple options that wasn't just like Japanese Mahjong, just to see what the other like types of Mahjong there are. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a, a surprisingly fun game to play. Oh yeah. I, on my phone, I play Kimono Majan, which is basically you play against fur, fury, f- furries, and uh, um, but it all has like in like an actual like uh, tutorial for stuff, and you can like uh, when you're playing the game, you can like pull up a guy to see like what are winning hands and whatnot. Hmm. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's like all this interesting information wrapped up in like a weird game, <laughs> like a weird in- version of the game. Yeah, so it's just very random, but it's like it's actually like really well done, and it's just like, oh, okay, I'm playing against a bird, an ox, and a random Shiba Inu. Okay, sick. Oh man, so as, as if you want to learn more, I think that's probably the best way to do it because it's like, I think it's still Japanese Majan, but it's like, like 
they they say the word slightly differently. I don't know why. I think it's just maybe it's I don't know. Yeah, I'm there's not very familiar. a bunch of different versions. I it was hard for me to find something that like fit what the show had too. So mm. uh, no, Riss, we do not play Fortnite. Unfortunately, sorry, we are uh... unfortunately <laughs> kill yourself. Yeah, maybe. Well, don't don't ease ease. <laughs> Hold on, wait. We just started. Can't say Rachel. that on Twitch. No, no, don't do it. TOS. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, then I played a little bit of Hero Siege, and then it's okay. I don't know. I think yeah. I like I played a tiny bit of it, and that Drax's feller came into our Discord and chatting up, and I was like, okay, I'll check it out. Seems really cool. It does, but like I I couldn't like figure out how to do anything for a while because I was trying to play on my controller. Not knowing like the the right stick allows you to shoot. I didn't know, I didn't realize it's like a twin stick shooter thing mm-hmm. layout for the controller. So I was like, well, X doesn't shoot, A doesn't shoot, the triggers don't shoot. What the fuck? What am I supposed to do? But I figured after a while, and it's it's maybe I'll get back into it. I don't know. It's just one of those things. I'm like, eh, 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 still on the fence about. Yeah, you need when to get yourself a with, Coulter. Yeah, when we played with Coulter on Tuesday. Mm. Um. For like the first 45 minutes or so, I was not into it. I was like, this mm-hmm. game is not good. <laughs> I do not like it. Mm. Uh, and then we turned up the difficulty all the way to the point where we could have it at. And it got more fun then. Yeah, it actually became like kind of more of an interesting <clears throat> challenge and required some strategy. Whereas mm-hmm. before it was like we just all kind of split up and just did our own thing and just like would sweep the place with no, well, like no effort. And then on the hardest difficulty, because like usually like we've, it's not like we put a huge thing on, on 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 how actually difficult the game is most of the time, but it, this is one of those cases that it, it, it adds the game. to the experience. You have to like work yeah. together and do things and really, nah. you know, try not to get killed. Gotcha. Yeah, on any consoles, yeah, pretty yep. much all the major ones. Yeah, except for Xbox because there's nothing. We don't. On there. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing on Xbox. So I mean, yeah, we have unfortunately. one. Unfortunately, yeah, PlayStation Four, Switch, PC mostly. Yeah. What about you, Riss? What consoles do you play on? You play Fortnite on, probably. Probably. It's probably yeah, everybody Switch. plays it. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah. Or PS4 oh, but that's it for me this week. What did you all play? I saw you played Salt. God, yes. that game is fucking bad. We played, yep. what, like an hour? <laughs> yeah. An hour of Salt. And, um, mm. I, you know, it's crazy because I had seen the game before and I was like, man, this game looks like, I mean, the graphics, whatever, but like it mm. seemed like it was going to be kind of a fun uh, you know, piratey ish adventure game with friends, and I'm like, I'm looking for something like that that isn't like uh, whatever that shitty game that had come out with Microsoft. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Yeah, like, sea of Thieves, like yeah. there's not a game that hits what I want, which is basically Age of Pirates multiplayer. Um, <laughs> but it's just there's just not one Man. yet, and and of course uh, that new Atlas. No, 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 Atlas. Or, yeah, is the game called Atlas? Atlas. 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 Yeah. Game's called Atlas. Uh, yeah, that game's not going to scratch that itch either, so I guess I'm just screwed. Um, mm. But, but yeah. Salt was te- was terrible. Yeah. It was really I, bad. I played it like a long long time ago because I had it. I'm like, what is this? I'll play it for a little bit. And I played it for like maybe two hours. I'm like, I don't like it. I don't – there's just – I don't remember. Like I can't remember now specifically why I don't like it, but it was just like I don't, I don't like it. When I saw it's you guys like play, streaming Minecraft? it. like Minecraft? It's just that there's just like uh, yeah. nothing. There's, yeah, there's, nothing. there's nothing in the game, right? And then mm. y- you get to the point where you're about to die of starvation and there's just no food. You have to go around hitting a tree to get like an apple or a fruit of the tree or whatever the fuck it was called. Mm. And there's deer around that you can kill, but the deer are fucking tanks. They take like 17 arrows and they're still running. Yeah, and you can't hit them and they're pathing. They're just like, they can go through things that you can't go through. And they just disappear huh. after a bit. But y- y- they have a tracking system that just... Like it mostly works, but it, mm-hmm. the tracking system doesn't matter if, as soon as you hit the deer, uh, it, it runs away like at twice your speed. And there's, and it's like immediate. So if it sees you or if it gets hit, so if you accidentally get into like its cone of sight, which is like this big, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, we all live refunded that game. Yeah, live refunded that oh, game. Oh, wow. And then, and then went into Hero Siege, and we, we just talked about that. Where, it was okay in the beginning, but as you keep going, it's it's kind of a cool mix of like Isaac and Diablo. Isaac and Diablo, where it has the the pedestal items that you can use, and if you die, you lose all of those like special items that you built up, and you have to just rely on whatever your character level is. So it's an mm-hmm. interesting way to go about that, uh, because you don't lose 
uh, progress in the the levels of the game, but you instead just lose like all the bonus stuff that you've been picking up at, at, as you've been living. So it's it's like not really a uh, roguelike. It's interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I mean, it was like fifty hey. cents. So hey, what's up, Grant? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Grant, Grant how's it going? Do you guys? Uh, either one of you play racing games, right? No, um, I like playing racing games, but like not just like NASCAR or whatever. I, I, I like playing like mm-hmm. Midnight Club and stuff like that, where it has like gotcha. more like okay. street racing games. I can't remember when you guys were into the whole racing scene or not. Yeah. So yeah, cool. Playing fours. I heard good things about it. It's just yeah, we don't. We, uh, yeah. Yeah. Not, I mean, let's play it. Those games always look good, and the yeah. cars are always cool. But I've I, I haven't played a Forza game in years. Um, I don't know if I ever played a Forza. I'm pretty sure the one I played was someone else's too. It was like on. It was like oh, it's at someone's house and they had it. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I like uh, Need for Speed Carpenter a lot too. Anyways, uh, other games we played. Uh, we got pretty damn far in Red Dead. Yeah, we're uh, almost, almost to the actual end of the game. Um, yeah, we're on the first epilogue. The first actual epilogue. I had gotten oh, confused. Nice. I had gotten confused and thought that there was just six total chapters and that the last two <laughs> were epilogues. But then I, uh, you get to the end nope. of chapter, chapter six and it's like, nope. The epilogues uh, happen uh, after chapter six, yep. and uh, which is crazy because I remember looking it up and, and and seeing that. But then for some reason, my brain said last two are this, and I'm like, okay, there's six chapters. We're already in the epilogues, and it wasn't really making sense to me. And then, and then in, you know, oh, there's literally two whole epilogues. Um, mm-hmm. At first, I was like, this isn't really an epilogue. Why is this called an epilogue? The whole time, I'm like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> But no, yeah. So we just started the, uh, the 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 first epilogue. Um, once we finish that, we can finally actually chat about what's happening uh, with our spoiler. Well, once you finish discussion. epilogue number two. Well, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> um, we played, we played uh, the the. I guess you could consider this a game. We played the Netflix. Uh, uh, Black Mirror episode. Black Mirror episode. Uh, oh yeah, we're still gonna do that. Yeah. Uh, Bandersnatch. Yeah. So. And mm. uh, we got we played it through to get like one of the endings, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, mm. I, I looked it up, and apparently Netflix has already been trying to uh, to use this type of system for uh, children's content, and uh, they were talking about how this is like the perfect way to test out this type of system because it's literally, and it runs pretty seamlessly. Uh, mm. It's it, it literally just plays the video, and then it actually has choices you can make on the screen, and the. The, it's like Telltale with real people. Yeah, and, obviously, yeah. and the transitions in the video are almost seamless. Like you, you make make your choice, and it just like like the next camera switch angle is like that's your choice now. It's like it's like th- there's no waiting. It just happens. It's really cool. Um, <laughs> and I might sit down and play that soon with Evie at some point. What yeah, I played some Burnout, Burnout Grant. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I yeah, played some Burnout. Played Burnout's Burnout. fun. Yeah, Burnout uh, Revenge was like one of my favorite games for a long time. Mm. I just like it because you can wreck cars. I just like yeah, that was cars being destroyed. Yeah. yeah, the the I don't remember what mode it was, but the one where you would literally just drive the car as fast as you could and try to make as much destruction as possible, and you would take turns with people. It was like a party mode. Oh yeah, as well was like yeah. literally one of my favorite things because it's like just the crazy shit you could do. Oh yeah, good times. Um, but then, and then I guess uh, Smash. Yeah, played some melee uh, yesterday, and then we played some Ultimate today. Um. I mean, there's not a whole lot we can talk about with that. Not quite been able to get back onto, you know, melee just yet. I, I feel like maybe we should play a little bit throughout the week to try to get back to to, to speed. But um, then I played Fable Two. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It has this Xbox backwards compatibility or whatever. The Game Pass. You were playing it. Through, yeah, right? it was like a dollar oh. per month. So I was like, eh, I'll give it a shot. That game is fucking ugly. A game, I remember when it came out, I was like, this game is beautiful. What the fuck? And now I'm like, this is like rendering to me in like 40p. Yeah, everything's it's fuzzy. It's fucking well, ugly. And they well, also yeah, have different framework game. or frame rates for particle effects. So like if you break oh, no. a box or some shit, it's in 30 frames, but the game is in like 60. Yeah. Or mm. the game is in 30 and the box breaking is in like 12. Yeah, no, I, I, I looked it up and the game's in 60. All right, well, then it's what I said originally. Yeah. But it's so <laughs> fucking noticeable. Yeah, it's real yeah. bad. Um, um, that's rough. Well, like, why? Like, 
Why? Wait, because you know on release, that's not the way it was. No, it definitely was. It, it I'm w- sure it was. The box breaking? Was yeah, because games do that now. Shit. Okay. I. It's a way to probably save resources. Yeah, that's mm. that's true. Um, um, what else was weird about that? It was just, it's just extremely ugly. Yeah, it's real ugly. Also, like... But Matt, you get a dog. How can you be upset well, at I, anything in that game? I had totally forgotten how weird the controls are in that game. And just, like, like how it works is so... Like, it's just kind of not It's extremely optimized. floaty. It's, yeah, it is really yeah. floaty. And, like, y- you couldn't for the... We couldn't figure out how to lock on to somebody to shoot them. Uh, but in, mm. but you were locked on, but then every time you went to go shoot, you would turn, you would turn around. around and shoot the opposite direction. You're like, what the hell is happening? That's weird. Yeah. yeah. Some weird shit. That might just be with the emulation, but... Yeah. Apparently, they released an update for the emulation, and, and it actually messed up people's, like, official versions of the game, because it would update to the emulation version. It's real weird. There's a bunch of stuff happening with that. But, yeah. Unfortunate, right? Because, um, I, I mean, at that point, it's almost like Fable TLC is better. Well, yeah. Fable also does the... TLC does the frame rate where boxes and shit like that are lower frame rate than the game. Well, I'm, I'm just talking about overall visuals. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. But I guess with... The, it, it got a remake in like 2014 or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, the anniversary, yeah. It's the... Yeah. Uh, it might be a long time before we see a Fable 2 anniversary, if ever. Uh, yeah, probably would, not. Yeah, probably, probably not. Probably not. Apparently <laughs> Fallout 4 or Fallout 4. Fuck. <laughs> Fable 4 Close. might be in... Uh, production oh. by the people who made Forza. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, well, shit. We had to fight cars. <laughs> <laughs> carriages. Like, mm. super soup, souped-up carriages. There we go. Uh, mm-hmm. Anything else we played? No, nah, not really. I can't really think of anything. I mean... We played Thronebreaker, me and Colter. Yeah. The game is real good. <laughs> All right. Cool. Sick. All right, let's talk about our first story. <laughs> Still so, good. So, first thing on the list today... Um, we got some we got some Bethesda related news. Um, so coming right out the gate, um, I'm sure everybody remembers um, the whole Fallout 76 canvas bag um, controversy. Uh, well, to add to that, Bethesda um, released an eighty dollar special edition rum bottle called Nuka Nuka Dark Rum. Yeah, yeah, Nuka Dark Dark Rum. And uh, when people received it, uh, reminder, they paid $80 for this, uh, plus shipping on the special edition Nuka-Cola rum bottle. Our disbelief after their high-quality product turned out to be a simple glass bottle and cheap plastic cover. Literally just like a, like a black over thing. It actually looks bad. Um, it says here... Yeah, basically people are just upset because they paid $80 for something that's like probably not worth... Five dollars, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not even sure. Like, is there even anything in it? No. Yeah. Well, it looks like it's the the bla- the plastic part you just put on top of the fucking Nuka Dark glass thing. It looks like. Oh really? It That's looks like it comes in like that. It looks like it's a so basically. Well, like a no, covering, the no, whole no, cover. No, it's a cover. Yeah. See, it has, yeah. has a black plastic covering, and then I guess you can. I'm and sure that's like the actual it. alcohol in the glass there. I'm assuming Ew. you put that over. Like it comes in, like it comes with the inside. Maybe this guy dug it out, or you can like naturally get it out somehow. But yeah, it says here what's even worse is the pouring option. The glass bottle is actually a little bit shorter than its plastic disguise, which makes it difficult to pour the rum without spilling it all over the place. Given the yeah. cost, it's almost <laughs> certain that every waste to drop will only increase frustrations. So it actually has rum in it too. Okay. Yeah, it's an actual rum. It's just, yeah, for some reason it has like a bottle that's essentially a giant plastic version that's a lot bigger than the actual glass bottle. I mean, after 76 and the fucking bag controversy, who are these well, guys, idiots the controversy. buying Bethesda's well, cheap shit? They've also had cheap fucking helmets, the Fallout helmets or whatever for the Brotherhood of Steel, and cheap pit boy phone holder. When oh, they release Fallout 4. Right. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently these people had bu- had purchases back in September, and it was delayed multiple times before they eventually shipped it out. And so people are, like, just receiving it after, like, three months. So, That's not that bad. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, they 
unfortunately, they didn't have the knowledge of the failed Fallout 76 and and the canvas spec situation. So really, it's just adding on to the list of just like trash mm. collectors uh, um, stuff coming out. And it is just like, could they have at least put some effort in? Because they yeah. actually like contracted with <laughs> with a real bottling company to do this. Uh, and it's just like what cheap bottles emporium silver screen is a joke bottling <laughs> yeah and apparently Grant, they had, Grant they had brings up their quarters a... good oh, okay no I was no done. he's done yeah <laughs> he's he's finished no Grant brings up a good question is Bethesda going down a dark path like EA answer is yeah I don't think they're so. trying to. Well, no. they're trying to. It seems like yeah, it looks like they're doing their very best. I think to going... be the absolute worst company of the year. I think they're trying mm-hmm. so hard so that like when they, they rise up in twenty nineteen, one bad game. Mm-hmm. All right, terrible game. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, <laughs> but they, I don't, I don't know. I don't I th- think so. Not I think at all. they've hit like a real shitty three months. Yeah. Um, and they're going down a different road than EA. EA's road is like a. A way crazier road that has been taking years and years and years to, you know, travel, right? Just like consistent shit. Mm. Uh, with Bethesda, it really just seems like like Fallout 4 was disappointing and some of the collector stuff was less than what people were expecting, right? And then it's just yeah. now it's just worse. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think they're qu- like personally, I don't think they're quite there, but it really does make me wonder about like the next games that they're coming out and you know there's a chance there to redeem themselves in the next year or so but it's going to be real hard that's uh, that's what i was thinking either they a are just going down this path and this is just what they choose to do in life or b this is all like they're trying to like create the the, the pre-story to the redemption arc in 2019 they actually so they're like this. oh and they're like, oh wow, guys, look, listen, we know we messed up. Here's here's Fallout Five for real this time. Look at it. It's a whole new engine. We got all new That's stuff. <laughs> look, nothing's broken ever. And look, we have canvas bags. And you'll get every single one of them because you ordered it, and that's what you, you, you deserve to get your money's worth. Free with the game. Free with the game. Everybody with the gets game. a canvas bag. He said, "Okay, calm down, Bethesda, Oprah." <laughs> I tried to put Bethesda and Oprah together. Yeah, that's no. My brain couldn't figure it out. Uh, no, 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 Oprah, Fiske, you're living in a fantasy reality now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think no, it'll I... take longer than just a year, but yeah. I mean, hopefully, they have a chance. Balls in their court. Yeah, well, you know, you got to think like EA like cannibalizes studios, right? Mm. Kills, you know, lots of great studios that made great games back in the day. Yeah. Bethesda hasn't done that. No, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Th- th- well, that's I the mean, big what do you separator. Mean yet, <laughs> yeah, I think yet. I think he's just he's just being facetious. <laughs> yeah. he's like, oh, uh-huh. I mean, so far they they you know they seem to put a lot of stock in single player stuff, which you know is against the market trend right now. Mm. Um, Nobody but, buys single player uh, games, so. Oh, I was laughing because I, I I just glanced at this again, and it's like after a whole bag of backlash, Bethesda uh, offered proper <laughs> replacements, which were currently in production. It remains to be seen if this no- Nuka Cola rum situation ends in a similar way. I can tell you right now, it's not gonna, because there's one thing to order bags from just like some kind of you know company that just makes bags, right? It's another thing to then go back to the rum bottling company and and, and have them make a new bottle with new stuff. And then release it again. Like I feel like they already had issues with the orders and the pre-orders and just the overall like amount of requests that they got. Mm. I think this is just it for, for the rum, and people are just going to be stuck with their eighty dollar, like bare, their eighty dollar rum. <laughs> a bare minimum fix they could do is like shorten the plastic thing by an inch so the thing would pour out correctly. Yeah, but you know, I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, you know, push anything too hard. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, try to bring Bethesda back up into good graces or anything by one Look, simple trick. I think they're like ninety percent at fault. All right, but that other ten percent is the fucking consumer. Stop buying the shit. They'll stop making it. Yeah, who oh, buys yeah. an eighty dollar uh, Fallout themed rum bottle and 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 like it. 
looking looking at it right here, it totally makes sense that they made a plastic covering because they're contracting with this special bottling company and to get like a specialized dark bottle that outside of their usual stuff for a limited order is like mm. something that's going to be way more expensive than just okay, we'll take our usual bottles and then we'll we'll and and then we'll have a separate plastic covering made, you know? Yeah. Like just from a cost thing it it makes sense but i mean the fact that it was totally unknown that it was going to be plastic and and all this other stuff that is definitely bethesda's fault for not f making it perfectly clear that this is what they're getting you know mm. but, but yeah uh, well i think everybody has learned if, if they haven't learned before everybody has learned to like hold off on buying bethesda stuff for now i hope so <laughs> no <laughs> i hope so people are idiots dude well yeah uh, speaking of people who are idiots, uh, we can pivot over to the other Bethesda-related news. Um, uh, Fallout 76 players say Bethesda wants an essay to get accounts back. So uh, basically, after being banned playing Fallout 76, uh, the uh, for specifically using cheats and 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 and, and things like that, uh, Bethesda is requiring players to write a 500-word essay. Um, specifically about uh, why the use of third-party cheat software is detrimental to an online game community. Uh, and then they, they write the essay, and then I'm assuming Bethesda reads it and grades it. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do with it. <laughs> Give and then you a gold star. that's how you will be able to get your account back in unbanned. Um, and it's just a really weird way to do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine. I think that's a good way to do it. It's kind of funny. It's good, but it is it, it still like weird them. that 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 they have them write an essay. Yeah, well, but it's not like that, or don't get your account back at all. Right. Well, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's a good, it's a good way, but it is still weird. It's like, okay, write this essay, but what? Well, okay, uh, game cheats bad. I write about cheats, and they're not good. Cheats are bad. Okay, here's your account again. Thanks. Great. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna ha it'll, it'll have a more positive effect than a negative effect. Yeah, I just it, don't it, think it it'll have any effect whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> it basically says at the end of the email, if you would like to appeal this account closure, we would be willing to accept an essay, and then it has that line that I said before for our management team to review, and then uh, apparently that's the only way you can get it. And it says it's, it's a comically strange way to give players a chance to overturn their bans, but Bethesda has been known to be cheeky in the past. As far as receipts go. There are screenshots of identical support emails included in the video, which is just in the link um, in, in, in the article, uh, which suggests that these users may not be joking around. The fact that we have three instances of this email across three different posts leads me to believe it's pretty legit. Uh, so, and uh, apparently they've asked Bethesda directly about it, but haven't yet received a response. Um, but mm. it seems like m most people... Um, are arguing that they were unfairly banned, and uh, they're assuming that most people are unlikely to uh, complete this homework assignment to get their account back. Mm. Um, so, oh, yeah. interesting. Again, yeah, it's very. At least it's just for the cheaters too. It's not for people who like are just modding their game to like make it look fancy and like just you know make it like a good make it look like a good video game, so you know they can just get their accounts back asap. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Um, I'm I'm curious to 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 know what Bethesda's like official response is going to be, so that they can explain further kind of what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, that's different. Yeah, hopefully it works. But yeah, I don't really. I mean, like if you're already dedicated to cheating, I don't think like a 500 word essay is going to change. Unless you are a child, if you're yeah. a literal child and you write about like, oh, I don't want to do this again. I guess I won't cheat ever again. That work, but for people who are like above twenty, it's like, oh, okay, okay. I don't know. I feel like people. Like I said, I think it, 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 if it does, like, if it helps at all, mm. like, I think it's positive. If like three people out of three thousand do it, that's still better than zero right. that they would have had originally. Hmm. Yeah. Plus, this is a non-intrusive way to do it. Because otherwise, you, they just won't get their account back at all, period. So, Are you being getting... uncharacteristically optimistic? <laughs> I know it's off-brand. Uh, yeah, don't do it, man. <laughs> get out of here. Um, I mean, besides <laughs> the fact that it's Fallout 76, and like, why would you go back? 
um, yeah. The next uh, topic that we have here, um, but uh, well, Blizzard. Blizzard. There you go. Mm-hmm. Sound it out. Close. Yeah. Be Sorry, I was I was looking over what, what you're doing there. So Blizzard um, has uh, decided to uh, require. I, I'm not sure if it's just Overwatch players, but r- r- require players who, um, to uh, tie their Twitch account to their Battle.net account um, as a way no, to just, try to clean up Twitch chat. Yeah, I think it's just for Overwatch events. So, yeah, you know, it's not for just it's not just for Overwatch players. It's your whole Battle.net account that you're right, tagging oh, it. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And and. Uh, yeah, it's just it's it, it's 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 for their new chat moderation system. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, you tie your account in there, and then you, if you're a shithead in an Overwatch League chat, then they'll ban you. Yeah, from mm-hmm. your Battle.net account. Yeah, basically, it says since the earliest days of the Overwatch League, Blizzard has had a tough time getting fans and even pro players to behave themselves in Twitch chat, and it says. Um, whether it was spamming emotes or simply posting offensive messages every week at the Overwatch League. Not the spamming of emotes. Oh, it's something uh, crazy happened and someone went Craigasm, 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 Craigasm. No, <laughs> like, oh, stop shit. the Kappas. Oh, oh God. No. I mean, I agree with the offensive messages, but yeah, that part's like, eh, I don't care. Um, that just happened. It's happens, very yeah. out of touch. Yeah. And it says, uh, every week of the Overwatch League meant more and more bans. However, as we head into the League's second season, Blizzard is trying to combat uh, Twitch chat toxicity through a new program that will first test during Overwatch Contenders. Uh, so viewers who want to participate in Twitch chat during Overwatch Contenders streams will need to link their Battle.net accounts with their Twitch accounts. The restriction, Blizzard hopes, will lead to a more positive viewing experience. Why don't they just put it in subscriber-only mode? Because they want to be able to hold people accountable who have Battle.net accounts, I guess? Yeah, but if you put it in subscriber mode, you get five dollars. <laughs> you also get paid, <laughs> and mm. you like. So what? Mm. I guess maybe the I think thing- Line has a great approach. He's like, well, you can call me an idiot as long as you subscribe. <laughs> and I'm like, that's that's fair. Yeah, you right. know, for you earned it for three fifty. You can you say whatever you want. Well, okay. Well, within reason. Well, within reason. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> but about me. Yeah. You can take it. I mean, you're paying us through that. Uh, or you can't play Isn't it a little ironic? Uh, no, they're not forcing you to do it. They're forcing you to do it if you want to chat in If you want their, to participate in the chat. In their specific Blizzard ran tournaments or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it a little ironic that Blizzard is trying to crack down on uh, emojis, even though like one third of the loot boxes that they sell for Overwatch is just emojis and actions? <laughs> And yeah. character icons and tags. Yeah, I'm sure that emojis is not the main reason, but yeah. Yeah, it's just I just I just find it funny. They list that as one of the reasons like, ah <laughs> don't don't dab on the chat. Stop dabbing, <laughs> you goddamn kids. Quit dabbing on my Stop front having lawn. fun. Activision has completely taken us over. Okay. <laughs> we don't we don't have a soul. We make anymore. mobile games now. Oh, what's interesting is that it says uh, the po- immortal. <laughs> The, the post itself makes no mention of possible punishment, like chat restrictions or bans, let alone any connection those punishments may have over uh, a user's Battle.net account. While Blizzard hasn't announced specifics about the moderation, it's likely that uh, that more information about the new program will be revealed after it's been tested. It'll roll out its first test during the Overwatch Contenders uh, uh, Season 3 quarterfinals, which run from December 28th to January 12th. So it's already happening. It's been on for two days. Um, so I didn't I, I, I didn't notice that, but it doesn't specifically state that what happens. They're going. Yeah, to a lot of people them. in the Reddit thread I was reading were talking about how they'll they they're saying they could ban your account. Hmm. Damn you, Reddit. Yeah. Maybe look like a well, loser. They're keeping it vague, so you're more threatened. Yeah. You it's like or exactly when happen. they're like, well, you know, it's just so we it's didn't like, say it doesn't mean that we can't do it. Right. That's uh, something that I. Uh, <laughs> think could be a potential thing it might be kind of extreme but there could be situations where somebody is in the chat um that you know they say something that's like really offensive i wonder if any type of backlash would happen to their account or not well it's 76 yeah, i think that's why they want you to do that is that you'll have real world consequences yeah. we're like well we're gonna take your account so or, they say something in the or time chat, your account and then like Ban you from the game. Here's a fucking idea. Why don't you just hire moderators for the Twitch chat? I don't know. Put it in subscriber only mode 
and then moderate it. Yeah, you like dumb motherfuckers. Like a normal, per- you, you, like a normal stream solution. Yeah. How are they still having a problem? Haven't they been having a problem with toxicity since the 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 very first day of Overwatch, and they yeah. are still not being able to get it under control. I mean, other other events that <laughs> that we fuck? watch that you know, granted, you know, sometimes have less people, right? But they're yeah. able to fully control all sorts of I weird mean, shit. In AGDQ there. does it with, you know, yeah. puts it in subscriber only mode, and they have heavy moderation. Yeah, mm. some people are like, I'm gonna drop my, you know, Twitch Prime sub and then call these people you know offensive names and then they just get banned and you're like hey thanks for the cheese bitch yeah i mean they <laughs> like, should take a, a, a you know some tips from how some of those events are run because that's the exact way that you would need to do it and it's the, it it feels like the simplest solution but mm-hmm. i guess maybe it's more about controlling people within their own space you know okay we control b- battle nets so being able to have that link makes us feel like we have more control in some way but i don't know so yeah it's it's interesting that it's vague i'm curious to see uh what ends up happening so that we know exactly what the uh the stuff is 10 years from now overwatch 2 still has toxicity problems it's only been out for Probably. three days yeah i mean <laughs> even, even the article talks about how it's not really quite sure like wh- how this is going to fix it <laughs> But it's not. Yeah, it it's will. not. It's not. But yeah. you know. or you just make a uh, an account that is not tied to your Battle.net account and talk shit there. Yeah, that's not tied to your main one or whatever, right? Yeah. Exactly. Boom. Yeah, people will find ways to be assholes. <laughs> mm. Um but uh let's 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 move on over to an article um uh, on cogconnected.com. Uh it is 10 things that really sucked about gaming in 2018. And so the idea here is just to kind of go through and talk about things that uh, were kind of what the hell and, you know, major overall gaming events. Um, mm. Well, you got Battle Royale Bonanza. Lots of Battle Royales. Oh, my God. I'm not really into those, so it doesn't really affect me. But, man, just the amount is, like, comical. Like, so mm. many Battle Royale games. How many do we have? We have, like, PUBG. We have uh, Fortnite. An indie game, Black Ops. Yeah, <laughs> an indie game. Black Ops for Blackout. Yeah, it, uh, Blackout. And then there's Battle Right, Paladins. I mean, Grand Theft Auto Online has a Battle Royale mode? I didn't even know. They oh, I mean, modes. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto's Online just has a new thing every month anyway. So they're like, oh, yeah, fuck it. Battle Royale, let's go. Next week we course, got Death Races. Yeah. And then, of course, they have Radical Heights that game that was and then wasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sucks that it wasn't like polished at all. Cause I think I, I kind of liked the vibe of it. It was just not a good game at all. It was just, it was just terrible all around, but I was like, Oh, it's kind of cool. The colors and the, the retro, well, retro eighties, nineties shit. Right. Yeah. But it was just like, weird, yeah, no, it's just terrible. <laughs> yeah. That modern retro look that is happening recently. Yeah. It's coming um, back. And then they have um, this section called I Love Gold, which is basically talking exactly what we were talking about with Fallout 76, where games literally have so many fucking additions that are just... Ubisoft is the main yeah. like yeah. bitch when it, it comes it, to gold additions. It's you crazy. want a fucking marble bust of, of Ezio's fucking head? $3,000. And yeah. people are like, all right. That sounds mm. good. I got this bag. I can put it in. It's from Bethesda. It's canvas. <laughs> it's made of canvas. At least oh, I wait. think so. Oh, I wow. haven't received it yet. It's not. I'm going to drink some of my rum. <laughs> <laughs> they actually did oh, have God, a, it's golden, not pouring out right. a golden bust of, of, of an Assassin's Creed character with like these crazy headphones on the bust for like thousands of dollars last year. It was, yeah, it was, it was, a, was it 800 I thought it, was it was something. It was, it was $6,000. It was six. Yeah, there was sure? one. Or uh, like two, or uh, there was like, I only know well, you guys because I saw. Right. Well, I only know because I looked through the podcast list trying to figure out the hipcast stuff. So I was like, "Oh, it's those guys." I remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah it was just a normal bust of like the. Uh, it was for Origins, I think, if I remember yes. correctly. Like Altair. It was a bust. Yeah, or yeah, whatever Origins. the guy was. Bayek. Not, oh yeah, Bayek. That's who it was. Was that Bayek like, bust? I don't yeah, know if I think it was so. a Bayek bust. That sounds oh, man, like a fucking that. wrestling move. <laughs> the Bayek bust. 
Assassins. But uh, yeah, and, and what's crazy is all these different editions. Uh, there's like hardly anything different about them. There's like one thing and like like uh, it requires you to go to like some article that just breaks it down for you it's like okay here's what you're getting all right the deluxe is basically the same as the gold what's up so it was a gold bust it was the head of bayek the, the with like gold beats by dre or whatever it was not six thousand dollars and it wasn't eight hundred dollars it was sixty thousand dollars oh my god because they were 18 karat headphones and the bust was gold and it's just it's all That's stupid like so kickstarter incentive thing where you're like here pay this absurd amount of money and we'll make a character for you mm. stretch goals. we'll fly you down to the fucking thing yeah it, it's it's it, it's it sounds like the the object of some kind of like thief movie right oh this this super rare sixty thousand dollar gold video game character bus bayek bus <laughs> yeah bayek bus like, no we gotta steal oh it God. like it so it sounds starring like Nicolas Cage. Exist, mm-hmm. Yeah, starring Nicolas Cage, right? Well, yeah, that you know, games don't cost sixty dollars anymore. That's a fucking myth. Yeah, that's mm. true. A lot of games are designed. Sixty dollars does not get you the whole package, my dude. Mm-mm. Nope. Yeah, a lot of games are designed specifically to to build into the uh, the season passes and all that. Mm, or games as services. Right. Um, and then uh, the next session here says another year, another lack of Xbox exclusives. Yep. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's yep. pretty much it. Just I still need to play State of Day Decay, but I, I, State of I, I Day Decay. The... I thought you said State, State of Decay. Cage. <laughs> State of Decay. State of Decay. State of Decay. I think they released like three exclusives. Sea of Thieves. Uh, mm. State of Decay. State of Decay. Two, yeah. And Crackdown Three are like the ones that they've been hyping up for like the last two years. Crackdown is not even out yet. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, and then uh, now the only positive thing that's come out of uh, Microsoft really is just oh, oh we happy few. Uh, we we uh we got some pretty cool studio acquisitions. <laughs> yeah, Game Pass is pretty cool too, but that's about it. Wait, not we happy few. What no, am I this it, is just the most the list of most disappointing games, and then yeah. in the list are are quite a few of the exclusives that they did come out with. Um, meanwhile, Sony continues to kill it with a steady stream of amazing exclusives. Yeah. Yep. Mm. I feel like... Ready to go, Sony. Like, I have family members who just have an Xbox One, and I'm like, oof. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you fucked up real bad there, kid. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and then the, I don't understand why this sucks. The next one is Sony staying home for the holidays, where they're not going to be like, we're not going to do E3. And then this motherfucker is like, will we ever see Death Stranding? Will The Last of Us Part 2 come out in 2019? Certainly doesn't look like it. What are you talking about? Where this... do you get this information from, you dumb shit? Trevor? <laughs> the Last of Us Part 2 is announced for 2019. It's yeah. coming out next yeah, year. Yeah, and they've been steadily showing us Death Stranding footage. Yeah. Death Stranding's probably going to come out next year. What the fuck are you year. talking about? I don't know what this guy's talking about, but I, uh, his main point w- w- was the fact that they just got rid of the whole PlayStation Experience thing, and they didn't show up at E3, so there was just no major... They did show up at E3. They're not doing E3 next year. Oh, that's right. They showed up at E3, but they were playing on... Yeah, that's right. So it's like, are we going to get a PlayStation Experience next year? It's just a little weird. But yeah, it's not that... like This one's that's not, not that big yeah. a deal. Yeah, yeah this guy's really. a fucking idiot. Also, this next one, no Diablo Four for you. Okay, we get it. The whole BlizzCon thing, right? Everyone got immortal, and they got upset about it. You know, is and... this an out of season Christmas or April Fool's joke? <laughs> 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 um, don't, doesn't anybody have play games on their phone? Is any, don't you have a phone that plays games? <laughs> God damn it! All right, next. And then apparently, this uh, he's talking about how. Uh, doesn't it seem like every AAA game uh, these days features more and more forced walking sections? These segments are pull you out of the action and make you walk and listen as the game is telling you the story. Red Dead 2, for instance, does it constantly. Likewise, God of War features a steady dose of these segments. Granted, sometimes it's the only way devs can uh, tell such complex stories. However, we'd like to see a little less of it in t- 2019. So, so your choices are eh, yeah, walk I don't really know. <laughs> and, you know, be kind of interactive or watch a cutscene, Trevor. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor. Yeah. I don't know. I don't agree with that one either. Your we're, first three were mm. kind of cool, you, but you're kind of an idiot. Well, he's, he's just nitpicking now. You get a little bad name. Okay, what's this section about? Can we get some I'm better pretty sure. sequels? Oh. I'm sure what happened is that he's like, hey, Trevor, you got to write 10 things that really, you know, that was terrible about 2018. He's like, okay. I got three. I got th- 
fuck. Or I'm gonna come up with the next seven. Yeah. So I don't feel too bad for Trevor. He's just I'm sure Trevor's doing his best. You're you're doing he's, okay, he's Trevor. Fucking Trevor best. <laughs> <laughs> doing his Trevor best. This one I kind of uh partially agree with. All of the sequels of games that have been coming out have just been like the names fuck like names that make any sense. Right. This fucking happening with movies too. Yeah. Fucking like Halloween. Uh, it's Halloween. Which Halloween? <laughs> the third one. The third standalone Halloween. <laughs> Holy, yeah. You're but talking the, about the you talking about the reboot that happened, you know, like eight years ago? Or are you talking the about Rob the Zombie new one? Reboot? Or are you talking about the original? Yeah. yeah exactly. All three of these are named Halloween. And the new yeah. Halloween is a, is actually a sequel to the first Halloween, mm-hmm. but they're both just called Halloween. Yeah. Anyways, they're doing that shit with games. Yeah, they're doing that shit yeah. with games, and it is. Yeah, like I, I get it. The whole, you know, God of War came out, and it's, it's, it's kind of reimagining, so that makes sense. But like overall, there's just a ton of games that just for some stupid reason they just have no idea how they're gonna uh, effectively name something, and then now we have to consistently put in name of game 2018 after everything, so we can friggin' find it. I mean, yeah. I think we can I mean, skip that's... the rest of the shit on his list. I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to find anything else. Uh, yeah, devs, like, overworked throughout the year. has been at an all-time high, apparently. Um, oh, Philip. I forgot about Philip. You remember Philip? No. He's the guy that stole oh. Boomstick Reviews oh, thing yeah, of yeah, Dead yeah. Cells. He's like, go ahead and see if you can find any more evidence of me plagiarizing. Good luck. And then the internet found, like, 13 more things of him plagiarizing shit. He's like... Fuck. Yeah, I remember that. God, that was crazy. That guy's oh, an idiot. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know or haven't watched, Philip Mewson was a guy who worked for IGN, and he did a review of Dead Cells that uh, blatantly stole from Boomstick Gaming, which is another channel on YouTube. And Boomstick Gaming like released a video saying, like, comparing the two videos. He's like, what do I do? This guy stole my stuff. And then the you know, was like, don't worry, fam, we got you. And then, like, and he, then got, uh, yeah, he, got, he got fired, I think. He, he got, got fired. And then, like, he, then he released, like, a reply video saying, like, hey, you know what? I did I did plagiarize that. I did really bad. But, you know, for people out there saying I did more than that, good luck finding evidence. And then people were like, okay. And, and they, they found, found the evidence. evidence. And, like, a lot All of Always sunny in Philadelphia theme plays. Yeah. <laughs> the internet finds more Philip evidence. Philip did actually play, plagiarize a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking so, idiot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. do, do you want to go into the 2018 gaming controversies? We're kind of running. Well, out I thought time. that was the. Yeah, I we. That's fine. Yeah, we, we morphed those. Yeah, we can go into Persona Five. So, um, let's see here. Yo, I'm fucking hyped. <laughs> so what? What exactly is this? Because it's, the actual so article doesn't say a whole it's, much. The, the when they did it with Persona Three and Four, they released a enhanced edition with more social links, more like an extra month or two of. Like mm. game time, and then like possibly a new ending and like quality of life stuff. Uh, so this is going to be that for Persona Five, and it's called Persona Five R. Usually, that's some like type of naming convention that they. It's use. like Persona always edition. Gold, or, yeah, it's. A, I don't know. Like uh, Persona Three is like Pez edition, which Pez. I don't. I, a oh, Fez stood excuse for me. festival, which uh, was a uh, big thing in that game, and then Golden. Uh, Persona 4 Golden was for the Golden Week, which is a bunch of holidays in Japan. Oh, and then Persona <laughs> 5 R, uh, no idea because it's red. R, red, <laughs> get it? Dead redemption. Dead. Oh my god, are they gonna remake the whole game but cr- in Persona 5? <laughs> <laughs> Arthur, no, wait until, wait until Red Dead comes out for the PC and then we'll get that. Right, yeah, it'll all come mm-hmm. out together. I don't know, dude. I'm fucking hyped. I was been jonesing for some more Persona. I was like, ah, oh, mm-hmm. I think should I replay New Game Plus Hardest Difficulty Persona Five? And I'm like, uh, I'll probably just wait and buy it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Apparently well, the good news be- is, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's just an announcement of an announcement. So they're announcing right. that's coming out, or that they're announcing that they're gonna announce something on March third on, on on March of 2019. Right. Which yeah. some people are speculating that's because people call like, "Hey, there's these trademarks being released or being whatever." I was that released. they were not doing that. It's because it coincides with the uh, anime. They have something released for the anime today, and in March they have a release, another anime 
Oh, the Dark Sun thing. Tie, yeah, yeah, that special tie-in. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, because it says, uh, during yeah. the airing of the anime special called, uh, titled Dark Sun in Japan, Atlas T's Persona 5R, or P5R, if you will, uh, the game has been teased for PlayStation consoles via the PlayStation logo at the beginning of the trailer, but no platforms were announced officially. There's only the mention of March 2019. So it's not like officially this is just for PlayStation, but and, and, and so you can't say that it's exclusive, but it might be. Um, Grant, you, I 1 million percent recommend Persona. Yeah. Probably my favorite mm. game of all time. Oh, yeah. Grant, yeah. Get it. Get it. Yep. And uh, uh, apparently there's also going to be a Persona Super Live P Sound Street 2019 Welcome to the Q Theater concert. Yeah. It's going to be hosted in April. Some Japanese bullshit. I don't know. I guess it's going to be a concert. So I wonder if maybe like literally it's going to be just like them performing music from the game and stuff. That might be kind of cool. We should just fly there and do it. Yeah, fuck it. Um, yeah. And then do we want to go to Doom? Um, yeah, which uh, I, I say yeah. skip the the other thing. We can just talk about Doom 25th anniversary. Unless you oh. wanted to talk about the board game. I mean, that was I'm, I'm fine. This cake. I don't care. I, uh, I'm the captain now. <laughs> I am the captain. Now. Oh shit! Oh no. Um, yeah. So it's it's Doom, the video games 25th anniversary of the original release of the landmark title. Um. And so the pioneer of first person shooters. What about Wolfenstein 3D? I said the pioneer. I mean, it's the same <laughs> company, you know. It really, they just took what Wolfenstein 3D had and then amped it up. Mm -hmm. mm. Guns, hell, demons, fight them, shoot them, stab them, fuck them. Don't fuck them. Stop yeah, fucking. Rip and tear. Please stop. Rip and tear. No. <laughs> yeah, my earliest memory is when we well one of my earliest memories is watching uh one of my one of my uncle's kids what are they to me nephews cousins nieces? cousins 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 play the original doom on our computer i was like four maybe three mm -hmm. uh and i'm watching it and then i had some nightmares and i was not allowed to watch doom anymore <laughs> after that <laughs> i was only allowed to play jazz jackrabbit which honestly not a bad game also a banger of a game. I also cried many, many tears when you get like a little bird companion mm -hmm. that follows you around in Jazz Jackrabbit. Well, he died. Oh, I just spoil it. <laughs> well, no, like you get hit enough, like oh, know, it's just like a bonus for not getting hit. Right. And then, uh, you know, it's like a power up. I cried. Mm -hmm. I was very upset. And then, and then you were allowed to play Jazz Jackrabbit again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unless continue to dwindle. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I remember playing, you know, uh, it, my dad had it on his computer. So uh, I don't remember. I I played a little bit of it, uh, but mostly I would end up watching like other people play it because, again, it was mm -hmm. like super young. But it was like a while after the game had come out. I was probably like seven or eight. Um, oh, this is I was like, yeah, you were like, super I, I young. was in there when it first came out. That's crazy. Um, being and, a three year old like this is crazy and then later on <laughs> um, I played a lot of it in like sixth grade and like junior high when um, we got some uh, like a bunch of copies of it and we put it on like multiple computers in the house and we'd have LAN matches and stuff like that mm. um, but yeah I mean I mean, Do Doom's a, a lot of fun I now, you know what's crazy is I played a ton of it's Doom a banger. and it's like, it, like just a lot of uh, in, in different parts of my life never once played any Quake I've never played Quake either. And like a lot of people yeah, I think so. yeah. talk about how it's like, oh, it's Doom and then Quake came out. Quake was really crazy. And it was and it came out like I I believe around kind of staggered, but like was kind of the thing that that I guess came out after Doom that built mm -hmm. upon what Doom had started and was like its own thing. But like I never played any Quake. It was just Doom and you know, Doom Two and then there was like the Doom Ultimate Edition and stuff. I think I saw my cousin play Quake, the one for the 360, and I later on went to watch the cutscene where basically it's kind of like the whole lunch point of the game where like you're kind of like half of this enemy type and you're also like half human and like you watch like the whole scene of like them like slowly transforming you into this thing and then you like at that the last the minute. That was the new again, Quake, right? That came out in like the early 2000s, yeah? I think, yeah, I think it was for the 360 yeah. or whatever one that yeah, or yeah. Xbox or that something like that. That one was trash. Yeah. Like over was it? Heard, yeah. Oh. I just saw the cutscene. I thought it was cool. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I never I played it. I just like, again, I saw my cousin play. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think our, our, our friend Coulter of Rogue Ridge Gaming uh, played a lot of Quake Champions. I don't think he did. 
I thought he had, he had like a copy of the game that he was talking about one time. I thought, no, nah, maybe not. Yeah, anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, and then Doom 3 came out, and I remember at the time, Doom 3 was crazy. Yeah, like, like at our age when that game came out, I remember mm. turning off all the lights and playing it and getting scared out of my goddamn mind playing that game. Um, like I, I got, I got it for PC and it had so many discs <laughs> and like my, my computer could like barely run it. Yeah. The graphics were so, were, were so insane. Did you play doom three on release? Um, I don't know if on release, but I did play it on the Xbox, the original Xbox. So, um, I, I don't know how far it got though. I, I really haven't played a whole lot of doom. I'm, I'm a casual gamer, guys. I haven't played a whole lot of Doom. I'm sorry. I mean, that's oh, why God. I'm probably real bad at, you know, shooters. <laughs> yeah. I'm also uh, not great at probably. shooters. <laughs> uh, that's just because you're dumb. Oh, okay. Uh, I have bad decision-making okay. skills. Doom 3 was edgy, the more like more edgy than Doom. Oh, yeah, no. It, 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 it wasn't... I don't think it was like, edgy. Like, it, I think it, it was, was dark. Just, it, was, it was so dark you couldn't see it. Well, they, they specially designed the darkness in the game to be unable to be seen through unless you had, like, which was like revolutionary mm. at the time, which is kind of a cool system because it's not based on gamma and the lightings, like like the flashlight you had lit up things pretty well. Mm. Yeah, but you couldn't like you had to have a switch like, the them. light yeah. and then switch. Yeah, and that was a big thing. No it, duct tape on Mars. No, but uh, nope. there was a mod that <laughs> called came out duct tape later on. That yeah, it literally just allowed you to duct tape the the shit to your your gun, and that way you could have your gun out and have the light out. Mm. You um, had an animation of you duct taping it too. Hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, Doom Three was disappointing as a Doom game, right? I think if they had retitled it something and it was just like a horror shooter, or just like advertise it as like, and so it's not Doom Three, it's like Doom and then like special title, so it's like its own thing, because mm-hmm. it, it was definitely like you know part of the Doom story, and I f- I feel like it did more to fill out the overall like mythos than mm-hmm. the other games for sure, uh, but it was definitely more of a uh, like a like a horror survival, you know. Dungeony type of game where it was very and, oppressive. Yeah, it was it was a very oppressive game, but it definitely yeah. was nothing like what people, I guess, were expecting from Doom, like yeah, running around shooting not. shit. You know, and it also inspired like that Doom. amazing movie, Doom. Oh, dude, that movie was it was <laughs> awful, but also <laughs> hilarious. It was like it was, it was like a great bad movie. It just didn't yeah. feel like Doom. Yeah, it, like I said, if they had just named it or gave it like a sub story or something. Yeah, separate. I think it could have worked way better Ooh. than just Doom Three. Yeah, I, I do remember that some of the guns in that game were actually sick, though. Like the shotgun in in, in Doom Three was like really good. Um, mm. But uh, I mean, and, and and then now we have oh Doom was it 2016? Another example of games just like fuck it, we're not going to give. Uh, it's not Doom Four, it's Doom 2016 now. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it's but, a soft reboot. Yeah, yeah, but that game is amazing. <laughs> That game is really good. Um, I think the only issues that I ever had with that game was uh, that it the sometimes the arena points got a little bit like tedious uh, mm-hmm. because it is you know it, most of the game is you get, getting into an area and then fighting a bunch of stuff in like a set place. Um, mm-hmm. But besides that, like that's like the only thing I can think of. Um, but yeah, I mean, Doom's twenty sixteen. There's not a whole bunch I can say about it besides like the the soundtrack's amazing. The gameplay is amazing. The, mm. the the graphics are amazing. So I mean, you know, I, I played a little bit of it on the Xbox uh, One. Uh, we but we sold it, and I never finished it. So that's that. But I did play Doom VR. Oh, oh yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that was shitty. So I mean, I don't really care. It was <laughs> kind of cool. Talking about how fuzzy it looked. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of like just the PlayStation VR problem, though. It's just everything's so fuzzy. It's so. It's like hard to see and it Fable gives you a headache. <laughs> but imagine Fable 2 is wrapped in your head and if you stare for too long you get headaches and you start sweating and it's just terrible and it's just like <laughs> I can't even handle like 3D movies cuz it gives me massive headaches. Yeah. So mm. I don't know if VR is ever going to be a thing that I'll be able to do. But you know they might Wample. be different. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't done Maybe. it. Yet. One thing that I want to try out is is some people talk about how they still need to wear their glasses Shrooms? when they're in VR. Oh. I mean, sure. Yeah, but um, <laughs> smoke them uh, if you got them. I'm, I'm, I'm nearsighted, right? We smoke a shrew. Do, do I need v, uh, glasses when I'm using VR? Like, you know no, what I'm saying? I don't think well, so. 
one way to figure out is when you get near, near a VR machine, try it with glasses and try it without glasses. Yeah. I've, I've actually never experienced like VR, though. Like yeah. outside of like whatever GameWorks had 15 years ago. Well, cool. All right. Well, we'll wrap this up. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasant story there, Spencer. Yeah. No. Good. It was really cool. How uh, you had okay, like a okay. nice little Jeez. bow on okay. it and stuff. Put everything on the last thing I just said when you get just decided <laughs> to be like, okay, we're ending the podcast now. Well, I just, uh, I'm the captain. <laughs> <laughs> Unless uh, you guys had other things you wanted to talk about. I felt like we were spinning our wheels a little bit. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, you can just I keep talking. Good. So I had to. Oh, well, I, I can just keep talking. That's correct. Mm-hmm. I could go on forever about anything and nothing. Um, but fine. Let's, let's get into where people can find us and what we're doing. Fist cake. Uh, you know, tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm Fist Cake. I'm 27 years old. Oh, no, I like long channel. walks. We don't care about oh, your, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, now he wants uh, to hurry up. <laughs> okay. Um, you can find me on the old Twitch machines on twitch.tv slash Fist Cake. Uh, this next month's going to be a little weird because I'm trying to figure out what kind of games I want to focus in on. Um, but this week's schedule should be Tuesday through Friday. I'll probably play For Honor this week. Uh, and also Tuesday into the veil with the boys, of course. And um, of course, next week, hopefully, I can get Warframe if I can never get my account back. But uh, if not, I'll try out Monster Hunter World. And there's like a couple other games I want to try out for this month. I basically I'm trying to figure out what game I can actually play a lot of and not want to kill myself. And also, what games are like people are like, oh hey, what's going on? Hey man, what's oh hey, are you playing this game? This is a pretty cool game. Blah blah blah. Um, yeah. on YouTube, <laughs> I got choked up for some reason. Oh, God. You know, don't cry. <laughs> you'll, find just, a, you'll find a game, dude. I don't know, man. I just know I'm, I'm almost 30, and I just don't know if, if life has a game for me anymore, you know? Anyways. <laughs> also, YouTube, uh, Let's Plays. I'll, um, I'm probably going to record some after this. Mm, I might hold off on... I don't know. I need to really upload stuff while I still have people halfway interested in the channel, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, maybe see some Kenshi, um, probably see some of the hex, which is made by the same guy who made uh, po- pony Island. Mm. So he, you know, he's got a special place in my heart. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'm also on Twitter where I just tweet random shit all the time. Really my best content's on Twitter, honestly, at this point. So if you just want to see the best of me, Go to Twitter where you'll see me free, uh, play the same Akagi GIF, GIF, oh, over GIF, and over, over GIF. and over and over, over again. It's GIF, right? It's no, GIF. It's, 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 I mean, like, it's GIF. Let's, uh, yeah. Let's is, all, is the, this how the oh, podcast wait. ends? Is, <laughs> but is the G silent? So is it if? You know, no. so I play the same if of Akagi like three times in a row. <laughs> that's better than a good time. GIF. <laughs> it's always a good time. But that's yeah. it for me. Where can people find you two? two yeah, well, well, actually, I was, uh, was going to say, because first off, you didn't say what your Twitter was, so anybody listening is not going to know. It's at the Fist Cake. And secondly, uh, Fist Cake did post like his whole manifesto about how he wants to change his channel and, and his approach to, to, to Twitch. Uh, so you, mm. should, you should check it out to see exactly what all the details are. And support your boy. Yeah, and support your boy. Because, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard because it's something that we've been thinking about, too, is, like, how do we play, like, a consistent game? In order mm. to grow, uh, yeah. we don't have to talk about yeah. it now. Though. But yeah, I was just saying, you know, uh, you know, ch- 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 check it out. Um, <laughs> but like, but we come up with an actually interesting topic to talk about when we're leaving the podcast. Save it for next week. Right, right. Now, new yeah. year, new us. Talk about yes. our plans for the future. Okay, sorry. absolutely. <laughs> um, our our New Year's revolu- uh, revolutions, if you will. Uh, no, but um, for Neanderthal Gaming TV specific information uh, uh, on YouTube and Twitch, it's the same handle, Neanderthal Gaming TV. Uh, we post everything, most things that we do on Twitch onto YouTube, so all of our Smash content and stuff like that. Right now, uh, it's just finishing out our uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu uh, p- p- playthrough, so if you want to catch on to that, it's uh, uh, the entire playthrough of the main storyline of the game. Uh, and then uh, you can follow us on Twitter at NeanderthalGTV, where most of the time it's Matt replying to Fist Cake's tweets with uh, random gifts. Not uh, random. Those are oh, selected. Very particular. I'm a GIF artist. Okay? <laughs> a GIF artist, if you will. A, a GIF artist. <laughs> You're a fartist. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nerd. Matt's a gift. If 
<laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's oh. moving us along. All right, so for content and police-specific <laughs> information, you can follow us on Twitter at, at ConComCast. That's really fine information about the podcast and about Into the Veil, which is our sister show where we play weird and wacky games. All right, um, and actually, while we're talking about that, what's the next game that's coming up again? Mutant Year Zero. zero Mut- yeah, zero. Mutant Year Zero. So we'll be playing that this upcoming Tuesday uh, starting at uh, 6 p.m., Pacific time. Um, you can also send us ideas and suggestions to consecutecast at gmail.com. Uh, the podcast goes live at 3 p.m. Pacific time on Sundays on twitch.tv slash concomcast and twitch.tv slash uh, All episodes will be available on YouTube. Uh, the audio, audio only version is available on your favorite podcasting app. We're still working on that. And both are released on Mondays. So we stream on Sundays and then we release those on Mondays the very next day. Um, and we're almost to the point where the pod, that the audio podcast is back to where it should be, right? Yeah, uh, I'll find out more tomorrow once I give it like a full day to refresh. But if the feed refreshes correctly, then I'm on board to start just uploading videos. If not, then I have to email his hipcast again, say, hey, come on, just come on. Please. This was supposed to save money, but now you've wasted my time, and now it's just whatever. Fuck it. It's it's a long thing. I don't want to get into it. We, but, we are making progress. It's just different forms of progress, I yes. guess. I don't know. So if you want news about the uh, the updates for that when it's finally live and when when the audio only version is working correctly, it's going to be on Twitter probably. So at ConComcast. <laughs> Uh, but thanks so so much, for everybody who came in for watching Grant and 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 and, uh, and everybody else. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.